Good morning, students. Welcome back to our new Green School. I am Afrin Sayed, your English teacher. Students, in yesterday's class, we have learned about the usage of helping verb, transitive verbs, and intransitive verbs. And today, we will learn about the usage of modal verbs. Okay. Modal verbs are the verbs which are used in a uh, in our day-to-day -day life regularly. But sometimes it's very confusing that how to use and where to use those verbs. Okay, like what are the modal verbs? Can, could, may, might, should, ought to, must, have to, will, shall, would. All these are modal verbs. Okay. Now, we'll understand the use of modal verbs. We'll see various examples uh, where these modal verbs are used and we'll see that how we can use them correctly. Okay. We'll not make mistake. We'll, uh, we'll see that uh, it happens uh, and it goes on correctly and we understand it in a much easier way. Okay, students? So, as we always do, we watch the video and along with the video, I go on explaining to make it simpler and easier. Right? Okay. So, let's look at what modal verbs are. So, these are words that express different kinds of things. For example, they might express ability, possibility, permission, obligation, okay? And some other things like that. Okay, so what does this word show students? So first of all, this shows ability. Ability means the potential, so a skill which a person has. Possibility, the uh, possibility of occurrence of event. Permission, a kind of permission, obligation, okay, so or all of them behave differently, okay, so possibility, ability, permission, if you want to, uh, if you want any kind of permission or you are obligation, obligation means when you are obliged to do something, when it's, um, when we do against uh, against or just uh, as a obligation uh, for something then it is known as obligation obligation means uh, well, you can say a condition of being or legally do something okay or maybe a duty okay basically a duty something which we are born to or something which which is our duty that is obligation And they behave differently from regular verbs. And that's why they're sometimes a little bit confusing. But let's look at some examples of what modal verbs are. Can, could, may, might, should, ought to, must, have to, will, shall, and would. Okay, these are the most common ones. All right, so I'm going to give you now three basic rules that you can follow to avoid most of the mistakes that are usually made with the modal verbs. Okay, okay. now here, uh, this lady is going to show that what are three basic rules which will help us to make it easier and to not make any mistake while we use those modal verbs. Okay, let's see. Then what are those rules? Okay. So first of all, make sure to use the modal verb as is. That means don't change it in the present or the past or the future. For example, we can say he can swim. This is a correct sentence. It would be wrong to say he can swim because here, the student put an extra S there, all right? 
and we don't need to change that modal verb ever. Okay? All right. Yes. Use as is. Is don't change pre uh, present, past, and future. Okay. When we don't want to change our present, past, and future. Okay. And uh, when uh, when we want to show the ability that he can swim. So, he can swim shows the ability of a person that he is able to swim. Okay. I hope you understand that here the ability of person of, be, uh, of knowing to swim is being shown over here. So, it says that he can swim. Okay. Now. We don't have to add any kind of words, uh, suffix or prefix in modal verbs. Okay. Like we cannot write he can swim. We just have to write he can swim. Second, Second. use the base form of the verb after a modal. Don't use to. What do I mean by that? For example, you should say he might join us not he might to join us okay this is a really common error so make sure you don't make this one so don't use the full infinitive to join after a word like might just use the base form of the verb which is join he might join us he could join us he should join us he must join us and so on okay Use base verb. Base verb means the normal form of verb. As we saw that each verb has many forms. So we always have to use the base form. The normal form of verb after the model. Okay. Don't use to. We don't have to use to. Just like an example you can see. He might join us. So when we say he might join us. So might is a model verb. And along with the model verb. When we are using join. We don't have to use any kind of. Uh, another form of join. Like joining or join. Which we are just using join. And we are not using any kind of. Uh, joining verb. That is to. Like in the next sentence, it shows that he might to join us. So that is wrong. We don't have to use this. Okay. We don't have to write that he might to join us. It's just that he might join us. Okay. I hope it is very much clear to y'all. Without to. All right. Very good. Now, the next point is if you need to say use the modal verb in the negative form then just use not after the modal all right don't add any extra words most of the time there's one little exception i'll explain that to you but for most of them don't use words like don't or doesn't or isn't aren't wasn't won't okay so, with most of these modal verbs, just say not. For example, you should not smoke. Okay, let's do this. What are negative sentences? First of all, negative sentences are sentences which consist of uh, no, not, don't, doesn't, nor, or uh, do not, aren't, wasn't, won't. So, all this makes the sentence negative. But whenever we, you use any kind of modal verb, I repeat, whenever you use any kind of modal verb, then do not use any modal verb. Just you have, uh, along with that modal verb, you don't have to use any kind of other negative words. You, you are always going to use only one negative word, only one negative word and that is N-O-T, not. Okay, you are not going to use don't, you are not going to use doesn't, you are not going to use isn't, you are not going to use aren't, you are not going to wasn't, you are not going to use won't. In a simpler words, you are not going to use any kind of negative verb except not. You always have to use just one negative word that is an OT not. You should not smoke. Okay. not you don't 
So here the student knows and learned all these lovely words, don't, doesn't, isn't, aren't, all that, and try to use it when using the modal verb. Now look here, you should not smoke. So along with the modal verb should, they are just using one word, one negative word, that is N-O-T, not. They are not using don't, they are not using doesn't, they are not using isn't, they are not using aren't, they are not using wasn't, they are just and just and just using an OT not. So here the correct answer is you should not smoke. When you use don't, like in another sentence that it is written, that you don't should smoke. So don't, you don't should smoke makes the answer, makes the sentence wrong. But when we see that you should not smoke, so should, so along with the modular verb should, there comes an OT not, which makes the sentence correct. Okay, so you can see that we don't have to change present, past and future. Then we always have to use the base verb along with the modal verb. And whenever the sentence is negative, we, have, we are always going to use not as a, a negative verb. Okay. But that's wrong. Okay? So, the only exception is with the verb, uh, with the modal verb have to. There, we, if you want to make it negative, you need to say, you don't have to do this. Okay? But with the okay. other one. Now, the only exception, the only exception is have to. When you are going to use words like don't or de, uh, do not or doesn't or isn't only along with have to. The only exception is with have to. Okay. Like you don't have to come. Okay. So always um, along with the have to you can use any kind of other word. Except have to you have to always use not. Once we just say you cannot, you could not, you may not, you might not, you should not, you ought not to. Okay? So there you have to be careful where to place it. You must not. This one I told you is an exception. You will not, you shall not, and you would not. Look, I'll repeat it again. We can say, I cannot, I could not, I may not. I might not, I should not do this, I ought not to do this, I ought not to, okay, it shall not will come in between or to, then I must not, have to is an exception, we can use I don't have to, okay, or I does not have to, so have to is an exception, I repeat, have to is an exceptional modular verb when in uh, while using as a negative form, we can use any other negative verb except not. Not. It means you can even use not not with have to, but we can also use don't or does not, aren't, wasn't like any other negative verb. Then I will not. I should not, I would not. So, except have to, we have to use not not with all other modular verb if the sentence is negative. I repeat, except have to, we will use not not with all, with all other modular form of verb. Okay, and the other thing to keep in mind, when you're using this word and not, this is a really common mistake, so the important thing to remember this actually becomes one word, okay? Yes. Only in that case. You don't say can, you say cannot, but it's actually one word, all right? Most of the time, almost always, not is a separate word with all of the other modal verbs, but not with can. With can, it actually becomes one word. I cannot arrive, okay? In negative form, when can is being used, the cannot becomes one entire word. Okay, it's not separate, like can is separate and not a separate one. Here, when there is negative form, it becomes cannot. Okay. On time, like that. Okay, so now that you've got these basic rules and you've understood how it works, let's do some practice to see how well you've understood. 
Okay, so let's get started with our exercises. Now, the rules are written at the top, just in case you didn't remember them exactly. First one, remember, use it as it is. Don't change the modal verb. Yes. The second one, use, use with the base it verb. Don't use the... We don't have to change it. Okay. Whether it is past, present or future, we all we are all we are not going to change. Use with the base verb. Okay. Like we are not going to change our modal verb. Okay. Remember students, use as it is. That is, you uh, don't have to change our modal verb. Second, always use the base verb. Then third, use not after modal verbs uh, when the sentence is negative. But in case of have to, you can use any other word. the full infinitive to something and the last one use not after the modals when it's negative okay all right try to keep those in mind but most of all let's look at the actual examples and you tell me what's wrong with them there is something wrong with each and every one of these okay these are the wrong sentence we have to make the sentence correct okay the first one says you must finish your homework Sorry, you must to finish your homework. You must to finish your homework. So, what the first rule says, use as it is. So, along with must, we are not going to use any other word. We'll just say, you must finish your homework. So, our correct answer is, you must finish your homework. Then, second one, I don't can drive. Now, here, the sentence is negative. But there is can. So along with can, we cannot use don't. What we'll use? We'll use cannot. So the sentence will become I cannot drive. I repeat, the sentence will become I cannot drive. Okay. What we what did we do last, Meta? Then we have, uh, you should not to smoke. So rather than using you should not to smoke, we just have to use you should not smoke. Okay. Then we not could call you. So how should it be? It should be we could not call you. It should not be we not could call you. It should be we could not call you. He might go to sleep. So here it is might. Rather it should be might. He might go to sleep. Then they can stay. Uh, they can to stay with us. So here it should be they can stay with us. We don't have to use to. They can stay with us. We would not to arrive on time. So it should be we would we would not arrive on time. She will return soon. It should be she will return soon. Okay. I hope you would have understood it well, students. Let's move ahead. What? Okay. You should. Okay. Okay. We would not to arrive. Return soon. She wills return soon. Okay, so what's wrong there? The first rule up here. Okay. The rule says that the modal verb doesn't change. And here it did get changed. So we have to take out the S and then it will become she will return soon. Now you can see the corrected sentence. You can see the corrected sentence, students. We have already discussed those correct corrections. Okay. I hope you are very much clear. I hope you are clear with the usage of model verbs. Okay. Now, what I am going to do is, um, we will learn it a bit more in detail so that you don't have any doubt regarding this. Can, could, 
yes whenever you have to show ability then you can use can or could david can speak three languages so david can speak three languages so it is an ability to speak so it is we are using can he could speak fluent french when he was 5 okay he could speak fluent french when he was 5 so he uh, he could speak fluently uh, french fluently so here we have used could okay so when we want to show the ability we are using can and could can could or may yes when we want to ask permission then we can use can could and may okay whenever we want to ask permission we can use can could and may can i sit in that chair please could i open the window may i borrow your dictionary no so can i sit in that chair please could i open the window may i borrow your dictionary so all this are being used when we want to ask the permission okay whenever we want to ask the permission we use can i sit in the chair please could i open the door uh, open the window may i borrow your dictionary so uh, we use can could or may when we want to um when we want to ask for the permission okay now may is more formal okay may is more formal here uh, can is a bit not formal it is a informal form it is a informal form okay as it is, uh, may is usually used like whenever you want to ask uh, permission from a teacher which is a polite form and uh, where you should you should be polite and you should be um, or whether it is a teacher or anyone elder to you and you have to be polite and you have to ask uh, ask it whether uh, you want to take permission for something then you have to use may rather than can okay because uh, it is an informal for, uh, can is an informal way okay can is a informal whereas could and may are more formal and polite could and are are more formal and polite and whereas may stands uh, for more politeness and it is like you are asking like may i go to uh, may i go may i go to meet my friend like when you are asking to uh, permission from your mother then you will ask that may i go to my friend okay so there is something where you are asking something okay so there may is used in a more formal way whereas can uh, is not that formal it is a bit informal form of asking permission should okay whenever there is advice we use should you should visit your dentist at least twice a year look here is an advice that you should visit a dentist at least twice a year so we use should because it is something which we are saying that it is compulsory that we should visit a dentist at least twice a year you should try to lose weight yes this is an advice to lose weight so it is something compulsory that you should try to we lose a weight then comes obligation and along with the obligation must we use must and to. have to whenever there is obligation we have to say must and have to we show that something which we have to do or something we must to do okay i must memorize all of these rules about tenses yes like something which is obliged to something which is given to and something which is our duty 
okay like i must memorize all these rules about tenses so uh, to understand or to use the tenses in a proper way you have to memorize all the rules of tenses so that is something which you have to do at any cost okay you have to take off your shoes before you get into the mosque Yes, you have to take off your shoes before you get into mass. So it is something which is very much compulsory that before you get into the holy place or before you get into a mosque, you have to remove your shoes. You have to take off your shoes. So something which is obliged to or something which is necessary, something which is your duty. So whenever there is a duty, you have to use must or have to. Might, may, could, or can. Yes, whenever there is possibility, then you have to use might, may, could, or can. Okay, whenever you find any kind of possibility, you can use might, may, could, or can. Possibility is something, uh, the surety of happening, the event is not sure. Okay, happening of event is not sure. There is possibility. Okay, whenever there is no surety regarding the happening of the event, it is known as possibility. So, whenever uh, such is the case that uh, the surety of happening the event is not sure, at that time we can use might, may, could or can. It looks nice, but it might be very expensive. Look, it looks nice, but it might be very expensive. Like we're not sure whether the thing is expensive or not, or whether it is expensive or cheap. But looking at it, it seems to be expensive. Richard may be coming to see us tomorrow. Richard may be coming to see us tomorrow. So, Richard may be coming uh, to see us tomorrow. Something which is not sure that he may come or he may not come. But here, the possibility is shown by using the word may. Look students, um, when, we are, when we want to show the ability, we use can or could. When we want to ask for the permission, we use can, could or may. When we want to take advice, we use should. When we are obliged to do something, we use must or have to. When uh, there is some kind of possibility, then we use might, may, could or can. Students either take a um, screenshot and after taking a screenshot, write down this uh, entire table with type, model, verbs and examples in your notebook so that you can remember it for all through your life. Okay, these are something students, this is something which you have to remember all through your life. That where should, uh, where all those model verbs are being used and of course they are very much important to you. Modal verbs asking permission. Yes, model verbs asking, verbs asking permission. Informal. Can. Can I borrow your pen for a minute? Yes, whenever, like, uh, if you're asking from your friend. Can I speak to John Wilson? When you are asking to your friend, then you can use can. Can I borrow your pen for a minute? So when you are asking in an informal way, then you can use can. Polite. Could. Could I please have a glass of beer? Yes. So, um, not use here.
rather we can write water okay could i please have a glass of water okay so this is when when we want to be polite when we want to be polite we can use could okay so can can be used when the, when there is informal way could is used when it is polite Could I open the window? Formal. No, when there is a formal way, then we have to use may. May I ask a question, please? Like if you are asking to your teacher, you can you, you cannot use can or could. Rather, you have to use may I ask a question, please? May we go home now? May we go home now? polite would would you mind if i asked you something yes to be polite like would you ask uh, would you mind if i ask you something okay so this are the way when we want to ask the question so we have completely understood the use of modal verbs now uh, moving towards finite verbs and in non finite verbs and non finite there are two kinds of verbs finite verbs and non finite verbs a finite verb functions as the main verb in a sentence it shows tense and agreement with the subject yes a finite verb shows a function as the main verb in a sentence it shows function as a main verb in a sentence and it shows the tense and agreement with the subject it shows the tense tense means a happening of the event that whether it happened in the present form or whether it happened in past or whether it was a in a future form okay so this shows the tense of the word for example we study we study we will study like we study we studied we will study in here you, you can see the first sentence shows the present tense second sentence shows the past tense and third sentence shows the future tense we will be studying a simple sentence has one finite verb a finite verb makes a sentence complete a non finite verb does not Again. show tense for example a simple sentence has one finite verb always remember in a simple sentence there is one finite verb and finite verb makes a sentence complete and meaningful whereas non finite verb a non finite verb does not show tense for example it does not show tenses she asked us to study does it show any kind of tense she asked us to study no here finite verb asked shows past tense a verb with to before it is a non finite verb and it does not show tense yes look students before it he asked so asked to shows us the tense that something which happened in past but to study to study is not showing any kind of tenses so it is non finite verb so when uh, there is uh, no tense when there is no tense being shown then it is non finite whereas it shows a timing that it is a finite verb is a non finite verb and it does not show tense a non finite verb cannot stand alone as the main verb in a sentence yes non finite verb cannot stand alone it needs someone for example my brother cleaning his car a verb ending in ing is a non finite verb yes the word ending with ing ing is non finite verb i repeat the word ending with ing is non finite verb here the main verb is absent and hence it is an incomplete sentence 
Yes, here our main verb is absent and hence it is an incomplete sentence. We add a helping verb to a non-finite verb to make it finite. Yes, we always use helping verb to non-finite verb so that we can make it finite. For example, we studying. Main verb, nil. We are studying. Look, here we study. So, here we don't have a main verb. Okay. So, what we are doing? What we are doing? We are using are. We are using are. We are studying. Okay. I hope students, you would have understood it well that what are finite verbs, what are non-finite verbs, what are the usage of model verbs. Okay. Now, what I want to do is, uh, what I want you to do is that uh, during this weekend, uh, during Saturday and Sunday, you have like uh, you'll have Saturday and Sunday. During that time, just revise verbs at once, and after revising the verbs, solve your grammar composition book exercise. Solve your grammar composition book exercise because I have covered few of the topics from your book. Uh, I mean, almost all the topics from your book, and whichever are remaining, I'll be covering in the next class. Thank you so much students. Have a very good day. Stay blessed and happy. God bless you.